wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. This is Voss here from the com. The com. Hey, welcome to another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by and uh, all that good stuff. Thanks for being here. I mean, have I always told you that I, I mean, what other podcast thanks you so much and spends so much time, especially at the beginning of the show, thanking you every time you come in? Can I, can I glad hand enough? Can I kiss up to my audience enough? No, I could not because we certainly appreciate the stuff we make up at the beginning of the show. Welcome to the show, friends. We have Chuck Brooks on the show. He's named the top tech person to follow by LinkedIn. He's cited as the top 10 global tech and cybersecurity expert and influencer. And he's a Georgetown University faculty and a Forbes contributor and a bunch of other stuff. He's pretty big over there on the LinkedIn as, as I am as well. So be sure to uh, listen to the rest of the show. You'd want to check that out. As always, we refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go give us a five-star review on the iTunes there. We've been having some great reviews. Thank you to the people who did the reviews. We're going to read some of those on the on the show here. I'm going to have to pull those up. In the meantime, we actually started posting a lot on TikTok. We're using TikTok. We're trying to get cool with the cool kids or whatever the hell is going on over there without having to, I don't know, do thirst traps. So uh, sorry, there won't be any Chris Voss thirst traps over there. I'm sorry to completely disappoint part of my audience, but there's all sorts of cool advanced stuff we'll be doing on interviews and cuts of the show. And it, it, already some of the advanced stuff we've been putting up has been getting a lot of traction. Go to goodreads.com for just Chris Voss, youtube.com for just Chris Voss, all the places we are on the internet, especially on LinkedIn. Today we have, as I mentioned before, Chuck Brooks on the show. He's the president of Brooks Consulting International. He is a globally recognized thought leader and subject matter expert in cybersecurity and emerging technologies. Chuck is the adjunct facility at, is also the adjunct facility, I think, professor at the Georgetown University's Graduate Applied Intelligence Program and graduate cybersecurity programs where he teaches courses on risk management, homeland security, and cybersecurity. He's also one of the top five tech people to follow on LinkedIn, as I mentioned before, and the top 10 best cybersecurity and technology experts by best rated as a top 50 global influencer in risk compliance. We're talking to him about cybersecurity and the different things that are going on in today's world that the business leaders really need to know about. So welcome to the show, Chuck. How are you, my friend? Doing great, Chris. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. We certainly appreciate you. You know, we were just talking before the show, the, the cybersecurity is a really big deal. The Justice Department's announcing something that's going to be interesting here about big government, some sort of government cyber issue and in influence that's happening in our world. But uh, give us your dot coms so people can find you on the interwebages. Yeah, th- you can find me at either my website on brooksconsulting.com, international.com, or the easiest way place to find me is on LinkedIn. I have almost 90,000 followers there. And on Twitter at Chuck D. Brooks. So there those you three go. places are, are quick ones to go to. There you go. And I guess this month is Cybersecurity Awareness Month? It certainly is. Every October. And every October, the, the threats seem to get bigger. And, and cyber hygiene and cyber security awareness is more and more important than ever. There you go. Isn't it funny how they make this most scariest month, Cybersecurity Month? <laughs> well, yeah, the- that makes sense now when I think about it, because if you lose your identity and you lose your, your resources and you lose your, your, your pocketbook, you're, you're in big trouble. And Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, you know, there's, there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. There's, there's a ransomware that's out there. There's all sorts of attacks that are going on to people. You know, I, I know that the Biden administration has been wary of Russia attacks, you know, because of Ukraine and all that stuff. That's kind of getting to be the only way they, <laughs> thing left to fight back with the pace they're going. What, so you, you wrote an article in Forbes, and this came out, I believe, earlier this month for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and you talked about some of the cybersecurity threats. What are some of the overall threats people need to be worried about right now in, in the business sense or personal sense, I should say? Yeah. Well, I think that, that it covers everybody. You're right. Personal sense and business sense, particularly now that a lot of us are working in remote offices. I mean, we're mm. even target that way. 
But, you know, there, there's, there's the traditional threats. There are still the big ones. The first one, of course, is phishing. I mean, it works. And what we're seeing now with phishing is a lot of automated attacks, you know, sending them out through machine, machine learning, artificial intelligence, targeting a huge amounts of, of audience potential. It only takes a couple of people to, to click on it to make it worthwhile for them. And so they're automating these attacks. The other thing that we've seen come more back into vogue is, is ransomware in the last couple of years. It's been around for a decade and a half, but now it's, it's growing in use. You know, the malware is a little bit more sophisticated, you know, for it. And the other thing, which I think the big change is that they can get paid now with cryptocurrency. Wow. If they charges, they're able to, to escape getting prosecuted and get their money. So ransomware has become probably, a, a, you know, a, a tool of choice for a lot of the hackers, the criminal hackers out there. Did you, what do you, did you hear about this case where I might have to pull it up on my phone, but there was a, there's a lot of cryptocurrency hacking going on as well. And there was a case where they ripped off like $90 million and then they gave half of it back so that they, the company could stay afloat and pay their depositors for crypto, but they kept half the money and the company agreed to that. Did you hear about that case? I had heard about that, you know, yeah. uh, they were desperate. But what you mentioned with these cryptocurrency attacks are pretty common. They're getting into a lot of wallets. Problem is, you know, again, is, is the, the legal aspect of it is, is that these are not regulated like bank accounts. There's no insurance on them. So you have a greater risk until something is really done to, to fortify these accounts. But they're, they're easy pickings for a lot of hackers. Yeah, the, the, the craziness that's out there. I'll, it's the hacker behind the Mango Markets exploit. He kept $47 million and returned $67 million to the DeFi project after a Mango community vote. And he even claimed all of his actions were legal, I guess. Somehow they found an uh, exploit in their uh, software. But they, he basically gave 67 back so they could keep afloat and so depositors didn't lose their money and kept $47 million of their profits. And the company actually voted to like, okay, sure, we'll do that. We won't pursue legal charges against you. I thought that was extraordinary. It is extraordinary. But part of the problem is, that, you know, I mentioned is that with a lot of the cryptocurrency companies or people doing it, they don't have many legal avenues. And a lot of times this stuff's lost, it's really lost. So that it's not a part of the institutional forms that you go to when you have an issue with, with a bank deposit or or a SWIFT or something like that. So it's very different to, difficult to remedy your losses, particularly when it's organized crime. So I think we'll see a change in that eventually because I think cryptocurrency is now becoming used by a lot of you know institutional banks and stuff too to hedge their bets. There's more acceptance of it, but there's a lot of people out there that have lost everything in crypto. Wow. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I feel bad for them. They made a lot too, but it's easy to lose. It's gambling. Yeah, it's it's that's the one thing that bugs me. I mean, I understand crypto and everything, and I've been in. I you know, I bought into it over times. I of course went out of it before it crashed. The and, and I kind of felt like that was going to happen. I think I got out a little too early, but you know, hey, that's that's investing. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I learned that when I used to day trade on Nasdaq. It's, yeah, the, the 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 fallacy of of how your your crap could be hacked on top of everything and the risks that you're gambling with. But uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with the remote working and stuff. I know a lot of companies and a lot of discussion has been, you know, when they were, you know, when people were in the office, you know, the, the, the email would come through, you know, the servers of the company and stuff. I, I suppose in some way they still do. You still, you can just set it up in your Gmail or something, but you know, there was probably less, less opportunities for hackers or malware to get in. But now when people are working remotely, you know, they're just, they can click on any link and, and uh, you can have, they can have access to everything and get into the system and wear around. Yeah, no, remote work was a boon to, to hackers in, in a lot of ways. I mean, what you just mentioned is, is exactly true. When you're away from the administrator and the, the IT shop, mm -hmm. uh, it makes it difficult to, to monitor and see what you're doing. A lot of people, you know, they mix their personal and their, and their business work together. It, it co-mingles and it gets cross-pollinated. And, and the next thing you know, it's, it's expanding all over the place because of, 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 of hackers finding, you know, vulnerabilities. So it's a real problem. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people working at home have not really fortified their, their, their workplace, you know, their router, they encrypted it. People are taking advantage of it. I mean, it's, it's logical. You, instead of having one office, you get tens of thousands of offices out there. And, uh, you know, it just makes more of a tax surface for hackers. You know, the, the funny thing about most people, I was, and I found this out, my, my nephew was having issues with his father not wanting to pay up for uh, some internet. So, you know, I, so I said, look, let me help you out. Let's see if we can log into your, your dad's <laughs> home internet. And uh, cause he probably hasn't changed the admin password. 
And uh, sure enough, he hadn't. And I created a DMZ so that he could bypass the firewall. And <laughs> gaming. You know, I wasn't doing anything bad or illegal or anything. I just, I just basically made it so he could have a DMZ. You know, and, and, and <laughs> surprised. I'm like, you didn't change the admin password on your home <laughs> router? And, man, if you're not doing that, Especially like you say, if your if your business employees or if your if your employees are doing that at home, they're like wide the hell open, you know. Yeah, if that's a common threat, I mean, you hit on another big. I mean, IoT, Internet of Things devices. You know, mm-hmm. there's going to be four Internet of devices for every person on the planet by in the next two years. So you're going to have a lot of vulnerabilities, particularly when you don't change those follow up passwords, which most people do not do. <laughs> and, and, and hackers are, are, are very aware that they don't change them. So they're looking, they're really looking, if you look at it, they're the way they think they're looking for any avenue into your network. Oh yeah. And that's the easiest way. I mean, you know, if you don't do that right in. So but what are some other things is, is a sieve? Hi folks, here's Foss here with a little station break. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. We'll resume here in a second. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come to my coaching speaking and training courses website. You can also see our new podcast over there at chrisvossleadershipinstitute.com. Over there, you can find all the different stuff that we do for speaking engagements, if you'd like to hire me, uh, training courses that we offer, and coaching for leadership, management, entrepreneurism, uh, podcasting, corporate stuff. Uh, with over 35 years of experience in business and running companies as a CEO, uh, I think I can offer a wonderful breadth of information information and knowledge to you or anyone that you want to invite me to for your company. Thanks for tuning in. We certainly appreciate you listening to the show and be sure to check out Chris Voss leadership Institute.com. Now back to the show. <laughs> so I guess you consult on this. You, you, you help companies sit down. What are some of the best ways that companies can, you know, like reach out to you, get more information or figure out, you know, assess their vulnerabilities and assess what, what they should do. And, and should they just trust that everything's fine because they hired a couple IT guys or, you know, I mean, half the time people hire, you know, they're, they're like, well, I hired my nephew. He says he's yeah. been at IT, he's 13, so he probably knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, you know, there's a problem with, with qualified cybersecurity people anyway. Um, mm-hmm. hard to keep the, get them and keep them. So there's, there's a, a, a reality out there, which I, I tell companies that, you know, you really got to be responsible for your own well-being. And that starts with cybersecurity risk management. It starts with risk management in general, knowing where, where your risks are in a business. But there's plenty of resources out there from NIST, from MITRE, from others to use industry-specific risk management processes to at least set up a strategy for your company of what data you want to protect, what do you need to do best, what do you want to keep separate and segmented from, from the public if you get hacked. You know, assume you're going to get hacked. Do you have an incident response plan? Do you have cybersecurity hygiene, teaching to your employees, all those stuff can be done with, a, you know, just a general knowledge. And I often go into companies and do that and say, here, we'll set this up. Then you want to do pen testing when you got a little more secure. The resources to do, there's also managed security groups that do a great job, depending on what you want to protect. If you're in the, in the in a brick and mortar business and you really need some sort of expertise for your payments, for other things, there's, there's other places to go there too. But I think in this world, you know, the first step is an imperative is risk. And, you know, you have to know what your risk is, you know, what, what you're spending, what you could get, what, what losses you can incur, and particularly what data is there. But I think most businesses don't even know it's their network. So I think a first step would say, okay, who's connected to your network and who has administrative privileges? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty wild. And then what about ransomware? I mean, ransomware is really out of control. Like I said, I think the administration is still expecting Russian attacks. And of course, there's North Korea that's really big now, China that's into it. I'm really interested to see who this state media is. The Justice Department's going to announce today it is doing some sort of illegal foreign government hacking or something. But what what are some ways that that can impact the business? ransomware and uh... well, in, a, in a huge way. Most most small businesses can go out of business, if, whether they pay or not pay. The, the advice from the FBI is certainly don't pay uh, because <laughs> they're going to just take your information and sell it to someone else and you're going to get hacked again. Wow. Uh, you know, so really it's preventive is, is the best advice I give to, to businesses. Make sure you have backups, you know, make sure you have mm-hmm. your, your data encrypted if possible. There's a lot of good encryption programs you can buy that are almost military grade. And, and, and do that. But, you know, ransomware, uh, you mentioned from a lot of the foreign co- you know, countries, you're not going to get it back. North Korea is funding a lot of their activities through this ransomware. 
And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, we are in shields up right now with the because where there's a threat of, of Russian attacks on, on businesses, you know, they've already tested our critical infrastructure with Colonial Pipeline and solar winds. And there's, there's plenty of experts out there that think that they're, they're already in our networks and systems that can just turn it in in a second. So I think Shields Up's a really good, good advice. Make sure you, you prepare, at least get ready. Don't know if anything will happen because it's a two-way street. If they do it, we can do it back to them. But, you know, it's certainly a, a real threat. Now with the Chinese, it's a little bit different. They've been stealing mostly IP, mm-hmm. which is very valuable and, and also costly to our security. So a lot of the, the hyper sonic missile information from the U.S., all kinds of food. From stuff from, from DOD. And they go into Silicon Valley and they go to universities and they tend to go after some of the early IP too. So uh, that's that's worrisome. I mean, you know, because IP and, you know, is, is definitely a, a value and it's a future. And we're now at an industrial digital revolution where I think that, you know, this kind of technology is, is really the future of the well-being of our You wrote in the article about 40% of ethical hackers surveyed by SANS Institute said they can break into most environments they test, if uh, not at all, and 60% said they need five hours or less to break into a corporate environment once they identify a weakness. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, those are the good guys. <laughs> those are the good guys. <laughs> like, yeah. So the ethical hackers, it's good that they're out there, but there are a lot more unethical hackers out there. So it's a numbers game too. And then you're also talking what we just mentioned, state-sponsored unethical hackers, organized criminal hackers. There's a lot of gangs that are pretty sophisticated. They've made a lot of money. They've hired a lot of talent. A lot of it is coming out of, uh, you know, Eastern Europe and foreign countries. It's very difficult for us to find them. But you're right. It's it's a, it's a problem. It's too easy to hack. You know, there's just too much, too much of a, a, a ecosystem of, of opportunity for for hackers. Wow, I it's it's crazy all the stuff that's out there, and it just seems to be getting worse. And are most how, what, what percentage of companies where you say are lax on their on their on their securities measures. Well, I would if you're looking overall, I would say over eighty percent. I mean, there's certainly obviously a, a lot of industries that have done pretty well with finance. You know, casinos particularly they they're the, the forerunners with some of the innovative some capabilities for for cybersecurity. But most companies, which are, are the bulk of them, are small medium businesses out there, don't have a, a, a clue. They're, they mm-hmm. they don't really understand the threats. They they think, oh, it's not going to be me, but it is me them. And, and two areas in particular have been really targeted by a, by hackers. One is is healthcare, you know, because they've they spent most of their money in, 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 in buying medical technologies and, and working for patient stuff, not for security. Mm-hmm. And same within education, because they have a lot of networks, a lot of people using it, easy access, a lot of vital data there. So those two industries have been very very heavily hacked for ransomware and other things. But so it's understandable that there, there are a lot of people that don't understand what, what the implications of cybersecurity is. But I think in the next few years, they better understand because we're getting more and more digitally connected in pretty much every business that used to be brick and mortar is also digital now. So they have, they have to understand the importance. Definitely. I, is, is, I'm not sure what the exact term is for it, but is, is, is fake linking, you know, like where I get an email or I get a lot of texts nowadays too that have this where they're like, hey, your Amazon account has some issues, your PayPal account has got some issues, you know, different things like that. Amazon seems to be a real popular one as of late. Number one. Is it number one? Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and you know, you click the link, and I'm sure when you click that link, you're hacked or you, well, yeah. I don't know, whatever, whatever happens. I've never, I, I have a big thing where if, if I got a message that says that my Amazon account is a problem, I, I look at the link. And if there's ever a question, I, I tell this to my family too, you know, don't, don't use the link to log in. Just go to your web browser and type in your Amazon.com and go through the portal. But, uh, you know, and then see if there's a message from them, which usually there's not. But the the fake, you know, the fake websites that they can have. I mean, I can I've seen some that where it looks like a PayPal website. It looks like your Bank of America website. I've gotten the Bank of America ones. There's the Zelle hack now. Um, yeah. There's all sorts of crazy stuff. And so. People just really need to pay attention to what they're clicking on. One thing I'm getting lately that just started, I have a bit, I have a YouTube. So it, it, most everyone I think has a YouTube. I don't know. Maybe they do or maybe they don't. But I've been getting this thing now where I'm getting a thing sent to my Google Drive. And it's a, it says it's a YouTube takedown notice for copyright violations. And normally you panic when you see those. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't ever get them because I don't mess with them. Although I've gotten some, actually some hacker ones that try and steal your stuff, steal your money by saying that this is part of your, you know, this is a stolen video, which I don't, but there's lots of people steal our videos, but it's been sent to my Google Drive. 
and it's got a PDF attached. And my understanding is if I click that PDF, I probably have all sorts of problems. Don't do it. Yeah. No, I think you hit on another area. I mean, the sophistication of these hackers now mm -hmm. have changed so immensely in the last decade. You know, it used yeah. to be that these things, you have a bank account, you know, in my will, someplace in Nigeria or wherever, some prints, mm -hmm. you know, misspellings. And now you're, you're exactly right. The graphics are, are, are replicate the websites. They use social engineering. Mm -hmm. Just what your your interests are, where you shop, where you bank, mm -hmm. who your friends are, so they can mimic your or your work, yeah. mimic your work. And you said Amazon is is definitely a choice because everyone uses Amazon. So when you get something, yeah. But, but your advice is really good, and I, I you know repeat it. It's just just don't don't click on the link. Look at it to go to the website. Make sure if someone says something like that, and and the copyright stuff. I mean, they, like I said, there's so much more sophistication out there. They're going after everybody and text too. You know, on your phone. It's just the wild, wild west out there. It's, it's really difficult to, 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 you know, not click. But so I, you know, I had to get a reflex to do that because I get so yeah. much spam and so many threats every day, you know, as, a, as everyone does, just because, a lot, like I said, a lot of it's automated, and easy to do. What about, you know, one of the things we always get is these offers from people, these, these Fiverr guys and offers on the internet for people to pump our podcast and our youtube and and stuff and i've talked to people that have worked with those people and and a lot of times their accounts get stolen if they stop if they're paying them for a while and they stop paying them then they end up with 500 bad reviews or wow. their accounts get hacked you yeah. know there's all these people that want access to the chris foss show to either redesign it or or work on our youtube channel and i know as soon as we let over the password like we're going to lose all of our stuff I've yeah don't do it <laughs> that, that have had their whole channel disappears and goes to in fact we had our chinese we had our instagram account we're trying to get back we're sending a letter to the legal department of instagram that we're pretty sure got hacked somehow by a china, someone in china because it's changed to chinese language oh, last exactly. time we saw it and we're pretty sure the hack came through a third part app that had access to it because i'm not it, it was on double, it was on double, uh, what you would call it, double password, double verification. Yeah. And we pr we're pretty sure we know, know who the third party was that it, it they came through. So we're still trying to get that back. So, yeah, it's crazy. Even like on LinkedIn or, you know, I, I'll have PR companies, they'll send me a PDF. And I'm like, I can't click on that. You're going to yeah. send the yeah. data to me because I, I you can't I, trust anything. You, you can't know. risk it. Yeah. Plus, you know, they can be like, well, we made the PDF. And you're like, yeah. well, yeah, I know you guys, but for all I know, you know, it's got, it, it, they was to someone else. If you're not secure, you're just passing me the next yeah. virus uh, cold. Yeah, no, that's good advice. I mean, I'm, I'm a big user on LinkedIn too, and, and, and the good thing is you can see who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're right with the attachments. You still got to be careful because you don't know where they've been and who's if someone's inserted malware in it. You know, they can do it in websites too. And I've, I've experienced that actually in a business sense where I actually didn't research. And I go to a normal website and there's some well malware implanted in it. So you really it's a minefield out there, and and they really got to most expect to be you know uh, exploited at some point because there's just too many too many red flags out there. Yeah, it's funny. Like Google does that every now and then for some reason our SSL will kick off. I think we finally upgraded our services at at uh, GoDaddy, but our SSL would kick off and like it would expire. Uh, on our website. And then people would get this notification from Google that says, Hey, this, uh, this, this is a button. And I get really pissed off about it because we, we try and keep that up to date. Yeah. And for some reason it would kick off, but people, I, I'm, I'm really surprised how many people aren't aware of that, but making sure the SSL certificate and stuff is on their website. You know, we'll get a lot of people that'll be like, Hey, Chris, we want to come on the show and I'll go to their website and I'll be a big warning comes up from Google. Yeah. yeah they don't keep it updated. And, and that's, that's all problem with cybersecurity. You don't, you have to update the patches too, because there's all kinds of exploits being discovered, you know, even by Microsoft every day. So yeah. you, know, you, you really got to be vigilant. And, and most people are not, most companies are certainly not. And so uh, it, it makes for even more difficulty in fighting the cyber threats. Yeah, we found that out the hard way over 13 years of the Chris Voss show. You got to update those uh, plugins and make sure because <laughs> you know, the reason they're updating is because they've, you know, they've found they're being exploited by exactly. Exactly. And they're like trying to patch it all. And, you know, I, I, I work with clients that, you know, I'll go into their WordPress and I'm like, you haven't updated these plugins for like five years. <laughs> like, yeah, you should probably do that. That might be yeah. a good idea. And yeah. WordPress is a favorite for hackers, too. They, they get, get a lot of victims that way.
It it is. I mean, we've had a couple of close calls where where we we had our site badly maligned about size seven or eight years ago when we weren't as good at keeping up on stuff, and uh, we pulled it back from the brink. But you know, if, and every now and then some weird stuff will go on on the website, and you know, it's usually always through a plugin or some sort of third party application we haven't touched on that we should touch on when it comes to cybersecurity here. Yeah, I think one of the things that we we, we sort of touched on it, which is is the new emerging technologies. We're talking about machine learning, but now we're, we're seeing the introduction of, of more levels of artificial intelligence that could go out, find vulnerabilities as well as uh, oh, wow. AI. You know, and, uh, and, and deep plant malware using biometrics where it could trigger on someone's face. You're seeing the, the 5G come into to play where the, the latency is, is now longer there so they can do stuff instantly with, with a huge amount of data or steal a huge amount of data, exfiltrate up huge amount of data. We're eventually going to see quantum computing too. Now the government's already put out requirements for quantum proof algorithms. Um, mm-hmm. We're doing business with DOD and, and DHS, but you know, so that's not far down the line and, and that'll revolutionize things, particularly the ability to to analyze data in great amounts, which you have to worry about because Chinese have all of our OPM files and everything else. Um, but so those elements are really important, I think, to understand that we're moving so quickly. I think with COVID-19, we moved faster into the digital world um, mm-hmm. than we had to. And, and now I think we're there just speeding it up, introducing these new technologies. And and also, uh, you know, I think that because the money is less now or the, you know, in, in, the, in basically the, the brick and mortar world where you, you know, where a lot of the crime was, it's it's now going to the, the digital world mm-hmm. for the same reason. They go where the money is. And, yeah. And, Action groups are getting, they're not, you know, some guys sitting in the, their base with the hoodie out anymore. They're, they're people with, with backgrounds and training, usually by the armed forces of a country or wherever. Wow. Um, and they know what they're doing. So it, it's going to be precarious for the next few years. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't even hear about a lot of ransomware. I've, I've heard of hospitals that will pay and, and do pay the ransom and, and just don't announce it and hide it for a while. And then eventually it comes out. You had written in the Forbes article that more than 80% of organizations have experienced a cloud related security incident. 64% of businesses suspect their targets of nation state attacks. I'm reading the, the, uh, the live here from the DOJ. Eric Garland here probably in a few minutes is going to launch a pe- press conference that they have this emergency one. Significant national security cases address malign influence schemes and alleged activity by a nation state actor. FBI Chris, Director Christopher Ray is going to be there as well. National Security and Justice Department people. So this is a big deal. It sounds like it's getting even bigger. So this should be interesting to see what they come out with today. It will be interesting to see. You know, I'm, I'm, there's always a, there's always a talk about sort of the influencing aspect. Of, I look more at the criminal aspect of hacking. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that very few of us, because we're bombarded by so much stuff right now and so much information, you know, I don't think we're going to fall for Chinese or Russian propaganda very often, particularly with Russia right now and Ukraine, getting all that bad publicity. So I, I think the real elements here are, 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 are what the Chinese are doing is really stealing, stealing yeah. IP and, and getting, getting to us. And also what the Russians were doing earlier and still may be doing with the capabilities is, is, is putting our critical infrastructure at risk. That's the number one fear I have. We have a, a grid. That's antiquated, not very well protected. Can you imagine what happened if they were able to knock out the power? They've already tested water, water spots in other places. and, and, and Nuclear plants too. Yeah, as well. yeah, nuclear too. I mean, everything is just, you know, connected to, to either IT or OT mm-hmm. or, or both. And critical infrastructure is just certainly an easy target. You know, I was a friend of mine. He's got a Tesla and it recently bricked itself because a, a firmware downworld failed. He was like, yeah. he was pulling out of his driveway to to go for a drive, and it it completely like shut down and bricked on him. And so he sent it to the shop on Friday and didn't have it for the whole weekend, and came back that it was a firmware, bad firmware update. Oh, and I said to him this morning, I said. I'm going to go buy a 1965 Chevy, one of those ones they use in Cuba that seems to last forever. Yes. I don't, I, I think I'm done. I don't want my car to, I've had a phone break on me. I don't, I don't want yeah. my car to break on me. Yeah. I think I'm, I think I, I don't know about the future. <laughs> I agree. I mean, you know, you now you have to be, uh, you know, everything has to be computer analyzed when you go to the car dealership. Yeah. You can't even change your oil anymore. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a you know it, 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 more things to go wrong. I mean, yeah, some of those old cars like the old Dodge Chargers, you know, uh-huh. with really you know reliable engines. You're right, nothing was going to happen to them. You know, you can take the engine apart, put it back together, but you can't 
You can't do anything now, touch anything now without messing up the car. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, now now they're stealing the the catalytic converters out underneath the cars or whatever. It's uh, a big problem in Arlington, you know, Virginia. Yeah, I'm just going to get me one of those old timey. There's a thing in Nevada <laughs> where I can get like a what is it? A it's a I don't know, a jalopy license or something. It's basically certifies it's an old car, so it doesn't have to. Yeah, it's all the good stuff. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. just gonna get that on a car. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't have to yeah. register it anymore and crap. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know, man. I'd, maybe I'll go yeah, back. I mean, to right. I, you know, I think they're 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 pushing for electric cars and, and have. Yeah. I think it's a long way off. I just don't see the infrastructure in the U.S. for that. Mm-hmm. You know, having charging stations plus the cost of the cars is so. You know, you're right. Let's go back to some of the old, uh, <laughs> big reliable cars that lasted ten years. That one year. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to trade in my computer for an etch a sketch. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to do that. Yeah. Pretend like I'm on the internet. It'd probably be more intelligent than what's on. They won't get half. Yeah. I got to quit knocking TikTok. We're on it now, announcing stuff. So I should probably give it some love. <laughs> yeah. It's got a big viewing audience. So I mean, that's, you know, younger one. For sure. It's crazy. And it, it, they get pretty good views over there. It's it's kind of insane. So, you know, I haven't had to dance around naked and make a thirst trap yet. Yeah. But... <laughs> Yeah. I'll threaten my audience. If you don't follow us on TikTok, I'll have to make, <laughs> I'll have to get naked and make thirst traps. So yeah. make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I might get desperate. More you want to touch on before we go out, Chuck? No, I just think I just just to the the viewers out there. I think you know really you know it's it's not a joke. You know that we really are are being threatened, and too much is you know could hurt us digitally. So I think you need to be really vigilant, and uh, you know do the basics, do the cyber hygiene, have strong passwords. True. Have have encryption if you can. Don't overshare. You know, just just be careful out there because it's going to be a, a, a get. A, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll ever get better. Maybe I, I think once this Pandora's box has been open. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was a kid watching. I wasn't a kid. I think I was in my mid ages. But I remember when they first started putting cement blocks across the front of the White House, and I think it was after the New York the first attack on the the the. Uh, the Twin Towers, I think in 92, the first attack. And I was like, wow, man, our world's changing and it's never going back to where it was. And of course, you know, things got worse from there. But yeah, it's just going to get more complex as we become more. AI is kind of an interesting thing. I have a lot of good friends who study and talk about AI and it's it's crazy some of the stuff you can do. And, and if AI can start going out there, you know, Skynet can hack me and send Terminators. Well, then we're going to trouble. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, the technology like AI is a double-edged sword. It can do really good. I mean, it can certainly have their analytics and capabilities, decision-making, but the bad guys have it too. And they, So, you know, you always got to look at, you know, it, you know, we have to protect ourselves and, and have an offensive capability too to go back after them. I mean, that's another thought too, but. Yeah. Maybe we can have AI that's the good guy yeah, that fights the bad guy AI. <laughs> then, it will be that way someday. It's going to be Eventually it'll turn on us. <laughs> There was a post I made on on LinkedIn where, uh, and not, it's on TikTok too, where they, they, they've been doing this artwork where they've been asking AI systems to say, you know, take Elton John and, I don't know, put him in space or something, you know, and the AI will, will take, search all the internet and put all this weird stuff on and make this really cool art. In fact, one of the art pieces passed for a real art artist piece at a at a contest recently and everyone's really upset about it but so someone put into an ai system they said design create recreate pictures of salmon swimming in in the river and uh, so it's all these strips of salmon meat showing them jumping in the river that the yeah. ai made so uh, ai is going to be kind of interesting <laughs> so, well, yeah i mean the ai i think the mit experiment where uh, it its own language Oh yeah, a little frightening too. I mean, there there are people like like Elon Musk is one of the things that ultimately are undoing is going to be the, the smart sentient artificial intelligence. I think we're away from that. Oh well, a while away from that, but it's certainly a threat. I mean, you know, when you know when you look at it, you know, our dependence on, on networks and if they take it over, sure. what they could do and trigger, you know, certainly when everything is connected robotically. <laughs> We'll see. With their own language. That, yes. That's not yeah. good at all. All right. Well, this has been pretty insightful, Chuck, and everyone should be aware of it. You know, it's 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 one of those things. How can people get a hold of you, talk to you, do business with you, et cetera, et cetera? I, I still think that I, I like LinkedIn. I think it's a, the easiest business place to find you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, go to my LinkedIn site. Just go Chuck Brooks on LinkedIn. You know, I'll come up first. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to speak with everybody. Just send me an email. And, you know, that'd be great. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Chuck. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me, Chris. It was great.
Thank you. And thanks to Monitz for tuning in. We always appreciate you as well. Go give us a five-star review on iTunes. Go to all of our places there on goodreads.com for says Chris Voss, youtube.com for says Chris Voss. See the YouTube newsletter, the big YouTube group of 120,000 people over there, 130, 120, something like that, whatever it is. Okay. So yeah, it's a couple people there. And uh, all the places we are on the internet. And follow us on the TikTok because we're trying to be cool because we're not. <laughs> oh, Delhi with the cool, with those kids. Let's get yeah. it. A TikTok is like huge, which and it, that's kind of an own, its own interest as well because it's right yeah the Chinese exactly getting a lot of information from young people out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just just use it with your Hawaii phone or you know, how, <laughs> how do they pronounce that? Why Huawei? Yeah. Huawei, that's it. Yeah. That's, just use it with your Huawei phone. See how that works. Out. <laughs> anyway, guys, so thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time. And that should have us out. Huawei.